We are seeing darkness on this earth like I don't think I've ever seen in my entire life. And so we have to understand that when there is this kind of darkness, you can ask yourself the question, you know, what is God up to? When you see this kind of darkness, does it mean that God has somehow absolutely removed himself from our nation because it's so evil, things that are going on? Or somehow, when it's dark, God then rolls up his sleeves and he goes to work. You know why I believe that he rolls up his sleeves and goes to work when it's dark? Because Israel understood the God who appeared in the midst of a dark cloud. Israel understood that the evening and the morning were the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day. In other words, God would roll up his sleeves when it was evening and go to work and create. Work. Move. That's why you see the next word. Notice what it says. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Watch this. And the Spirit of God moved. Notice, when did God move? When it was light? Come on, somebody. When did God move? We have people that want to escape and get out of here on the, on the rapture bus, and I want to say, wait a minute. Don't you understand? Yes, Jesus is coming, but don't you understand that there is something that's in process, in motion, that God is brought forth right now, that hell is re reacting. Just like Mark 4. Something was in motion. Jesus was coming to the other side to set a region free. Something is in motion upon this nation right now to set us free. That's why there's going to be legislation and laws that are going to be overturned, rewritten. God is going to bring a put it back movement among this nation where we're going to see the Ten Commandments established again in our courtrooms, our public places. We're going to see prayer established back in school again. I'm waiting and watching. Some people's prayers are, I just got, want to get the hell out of here. I want to say, listen, leave. That's the way I say about people who don't like the United States. I do agree with the president. You don't like it here? Go somewhere else. Because here's where I'm at. I cannot wait to see. My eyes have seen the coming of the glory of the Lord. February 12th of this year, I was wiping down the countertop in my house, waiting for my wife to get home, and immediately I went out in a vision, and just like if you were down to download a computer uh, uh, disk, I could see files were being downloaded in front of me, and in my spirit, God was showing me 2020, 2021, all the way up to 2032. I'm not setting dates. I'm simply telling you, if the Lord, unless the Lord tarries, there are certain things that God is bringing to this land. And it's not, unfortunately, it's not what I'm hearing some of the prophets speaking today. I saw a new United States. I saw glory hitting the nations. I saw one Korea. I saw Russia opened into the gospel in an amazing way. I've been prophesying for years, and honey, you know this, that China would begin to have protests. And that when you would see the protests in China, it would be a sign. It's happening right now. You know what the sign is? Listen to the word of the Lord. What has been underground shall begin to come above ground. And God's light in China shall not be hid underground under a bushel any longer, but it shall begin to arise, and Asia shall be shaken, and earthquakes shall be a sign unto Asia. So God moved. The Spirit of God moved when it was when? When it was dark. Why? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 11. It says that darkness, clouds, and thick darkness was when God appeared to Israel. Exodus 19, verses 16 and 18. How many have wondered why the elements have been so crazy? Well, for two reasons. Do you know the Lord prophesied last year, September 2018, and he said, let me give this nation a sign. And the sign shall be that I am uniting this nation. And you shall see the word extreme written in your newspapers. There shall be extreme weather, extreme temperatures, extreme flooding, extreme water. He said, you will see the word extreme. And when you see this word, know that I am using this as a sign that I'm uniting this land. Now, some folk, all they can see is just the signs. 
You know, Methuselah was the longest living sign. His name meant that after his death, it breaks forth. But you know what? Only eight people got a hold of it. God is giving us signs. Always remember as people are coming and preaching doom and gloom and judgment that the Lord has something that he has not forgotten. As long as this earth remains and the Spirit of God is in this earth, he will always bring goodness to mankind. I'm not saying that there aren't judgments in the earth because the Scripture says when the judgments are in the earth, men learn righteousness. But I'm here to tell you that as long as God's Spirit is in the earth, the Lord shall extend goodness and a redemptive plan to mankind. What is a redemptive plan? It's a plan of help and it's a plan of hope. And God has not changed and he's not changed his mind. So in the midst of darkness, look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 21. It was in the thick darkness where God was that Moses went into. The elements are responding. Do you remember when in Exodus 19 and in Exodus 20, when God came down on the mountain, there was so much glory that God came. And, and, and the Bible says, watch this, the elements began to respond. That's why you got to be careful that whenever you see hurricanes and different things with the elements, that we're not so quick to blame God. God has been falsely accused. Sometimes God's not in the wind, the fire, the floods. We have to discern it. Sometimes it's the earth, re, re, you know, it's vomiting because of the sin. Other times it is the hand of God, but it also is the hand of the enemy. And so the elements are also responding to something else. Do you know what it is? The glory. There, I have seen it, and I'm watching it. I keep seeing this glory moving closer and closer to planet Earth and to the United States. That's why hell's responding. Why do we think that every time Jesus went into a region, he was persecuted? He was mocked. They wanted to kill him. He was falsely accused. What are we seeing with this president? What are we seeing with this administration? We are seeing hell threatened and upset by something that hell doesn't like. When something is so viciously attacked, you have to look at it and say, why? The devil only attacks what he's threatened by. And so they would foam at the mouth when Jesus would come. They would throw themselves on the ground and have demonic convulsions like the news. But when the glory came on the mountaintop, do you know what happened? There was lightning. There was thunder. There was hail. There was earthquakes. Because the earth, the mountain, could not handle the magnificence of God who was coming. Are you hearing me? So God appears in darkness. Let me give you another scripture. God appears in darkness. The glory appears in darkness. Do you know that when the clouds showed up in the temple in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, uh, it says that this, this cloud is the Shekinah, Shekinah glory of God. Do you know it was the thick dark cloud. So the Spirit of God was moving as we see in Genesis 1. It's a sign. In the midst of darkness, I'm watching God poised to move. I'm watching the greatest move of God in motion. Amen? How many agree with this? Notice the next thing. And it says, and God said. Notice that key word. Why is that the next word? Because notice God said before it happened. Sound always proceeds a manifestation, right? In Acts chapter 2, there came a sound from heaven, and then what happened? The Spirit of God came. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and the Spirit of God began to fill all of those that were seated in the house. Isn't that right? So sound always proceeds manifestation. Why is this important? Because when you understand what God is doing, you start looking for the sound. Too many of us are looking for manifestation. You have to do what Jesus said. Jesus said something. He didn't say, be careful what you hear, because you're going to hear stuff. Isn't that right? He said, be careful how you hear. So you have to become skilled in your ability to hear and discern in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. So do you know that not everything that you hear is what really is? Let me give you an example. Revelation chapter 5, John the Beloved is caught up into heaven. The angel says, behold, the Lion of Judah. He heard it. It says, but when I opened my eyes, I saw the Lamb slain. So he heard lion, expecting a lion, but when he opened his eyes, 
He saw something different. Some of you need your eyes open concerning what God's doing with this administration. Some of you need your eyes. You're hearing so much of false accusation. You are hearing so much stuff. He's racist. This is racist. This is that. This is this. And you're hearing all this negative stuff, and you let that go on inside of your head, and you're not being careful not only what you hear but how you hear, and what you're hearing is affecting your perception. So you're calling it wrong. You know why I can call it right? Because I've heard God. I've seen what the Lord said, and I'm watching it come to pass. If I was just saying stuff and it wasn't coming to pass, then you would know that, hey, there's something wrong here. Because we need our perspective adjusted. In Mark chapter 8, in verse 22, Jesus goes, it's the only time I remember that he prayed for a man twice. And, and he takes the man, Mark 8, 22, who was blind, he takes him out of the city. Why did Jesus take the man out of the city? It was to adjust his perspective, like some of us. Some of you need to get out of the city, so to speak. You need to get out of the news, quit reading the newspaper, quit just voting across your party line because that's the way grandma's been doing it all these years, or you're afraid of the backlash that might come. And so Jesus took him out of the city into an open place. Why an open place? Because God created the open place. So that when his eyes were open, he would get God's perspective and not the city or what man made. And so Jesus touched him twice, and then he made him, I believe God's making us look up. He made him look up. And when he looked up, guess what he saw? He saw men walking as trees. What did he see? He saw a movement among men. I'm here to prophesy to you that there is a movement of God that is coming among the men of this earth and of this nation. And we have to have our eyes adjusted to what heaven is saying. We cannot misread the signs. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus sends, it's at nighttime, it's at dark. Remember how God operates in darkness. He sends the disciples ahead, and he says, go ahead, move. Get out, go, and I'll meet up with you. And so later on, Jesus comes out, and he's walking on the, on the, shore, on the sea. And the disciples are, are scared because the wind is, is, is violent, the boat is rocking, and they see this figure moving towards them. And the Bible says in Mark, uh, Mark 6 that Jesus on purpose intended to pass them by. In other words, it was a test. How bad, United States, do you want me? How bad do you want my agenda? How bad do you want what I have given? I'm giving you another chance in 2020. How bad do you want it? What we're about to come into in 2020 will affect the next three elections, including 2020, where God will establish his goodness if the Lord should decide to tarry. And we will see a new United States begin to emerge and a payback movement shall begin to arise of recompense, reward, restoration. And so they thought that Jesus was a ghost. They misread the sign. They called the visitation evil. There is a certain visitation that the Lord is doing that hell is responding. That's why there's so much hatred and violence. Because the devil doesn't want to lose his blood right. He doesn't want to, to have the church now have the legal access voice authority in the nation. Are you listening? And so we see this. God said, so sound always precedes manifestation. God said, let there be light. You know what that was? Let there be light. Think about that. A lot of us think that it was just physical light. Do you know what the Lord showed me one day? It was not just physical light. It was Jesus. It was at a pronouncement of Jesus. John chapter 1 says, Jesus is the light that has come into the world and has lit all men. The Father was declaring by the Spirit in the creation of mankind, let there be Jesus. God wants everything to be about his Son. God wants everything to be about Jesus. Let there be Jesus. Let there be Jesus. And it, and what we don't realize is the enemy is fighting because now we've got a president that is standing up and he's not just saying out of his mouth, Islam is a peaceful religion. He's not saying that Buddha is God. For the first time in our nation, we are like Judges 5. We don't know the name of our God. Judges 5, they forgot who their God was. They were taking shortcuts or side roads. And it took a Deborah to arise in the land. And a willing people, it says in Judges 5 too, the people bravely, Israel bravely led and the people willingly followed. We need a generation of people who are going to willingly follow what God's doing. Because for the first time in our land, we don't know the name of our God. And God is saying, let there be Jesus, let there be Jesus, let there be light. Also, do you know this? 
that the scripture says, you are the light of the world. Do you know what that word light also means? I heard a man say this. He said the word light there has its root in the Greek with the word political. It literally means you are the light of the world with God's glory and anointing to affect politics, to be a voice, to be a light. So God is saying, let there be light. We're seeing light. And you know what? Darkness doesn't like light. So guess what they'll do? They'll censor you. They'll shut you down. They'll cast your name out as evil. Right? They'll use fraud. They'll use false accusations. The devil's the accuser of the brethren. They'll make up proverbs, collusion, obstruction of justice. And so here's a good thing. I'm almost done with my message. Let there be light. Now watch this. Verse 3. And there was light. Nothing is going to stop what God is doing. Nothing is going to stop his agenda. I have seen the Lord, as I've prayed before him, more determined than I ever remember in 30-some years that I have served him. There is going to be a great awakening. Matthew 4, 16, those that sat in darkness shall see a great light. There is a great awakening that shall come. Notice the next thing. God saw that it was good. I'm going to start winding my message here down. Notice what he saw. He saw that it was what? Here's the problem. Most people have not had their attitude adjusted, their prophecies adjusted, their books adjusted, their products adjusted. It's all fear-based. God saw that it was good. It's amazing to me that it's a matter of perspective. Joel chapter 2, I hear this quoted all the time. How many are familiar with Joel 2? It's a day of darkness and gloom. And they say, oh, see right there, it's a day of darkness and gloom. But if you read, it says in the same verse, and clouds and thick darkness. Do you know the word clouds and thick darkness are the Hebrew words for the cloud and thick darkness of when God came down in Deuteronomy 4, Exodus 19, and Exodus 20? It's, it's a mixture. There is doom, yeah, and there is some darkness, but God has said, I'm countering that with glory. It's the Isaiah 60 principle. Arise, shine, light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Darkness has covered the earth, and gross darkness has covered the people. How many see the, the two operating and functioning? Everywhere Jesus went, he was the glory, he was the light, and hell responded and re reacted. So we're seeing this right now, but notice in Matthew 24, the perspective that I want to share with you. How many of you have ever quoted Matthew 24? There'll be earthquakes in various places, wars and rumors of wars, nations in perplexity, the oceans roaring, come on. Many will be deceived and offended. And I listened, and I've listened through the years of all of this. And one day, the Spirit of God in prayer, he said to me, he said, Hank, he said, when are people going to keep reading? I said, what do you mean? And it's like they never get to verse 14. When is the end going to come? We think it's all about the earthquakes, the wars, and rumors of wars, and God says, wait a minute. When this gospel of the kingdom is preached as a witness, in other words, what's a witness? Miracles, signs, wonders, glory, to back it up, then the end shall come. This is why God said, let there be light, and there was, and there is, and it's in process, and, and the enemy hates it, and he's fighting it like hell that's all he knows. So here's what we have to ask ourselves. It says, think about this, the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel? Good news. Shall be preached. If you preach something, you're proclaiming it. If you preach something, you're promoting it. Correct? So he said the promoting of the good as a witness. Now, why is it that the goodness is connected to the witness or the glory? Goodness and glory go together. This is why I'm convinced some of these doom and gloom guys, they're not seeing the glory. Because in order for the glory to come, there has to be a revelation of the goodness of God. Here's why. Luke chapter 4, Jesus comes in. He says, look at me. Behold, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He's anointed me to preach good news. In other words, it takes an anointing to promote, preach, 
Prophesy, declare the good. Anybody can get up and prophesy harshness, doom, and gloom. According to Jesus, it takes an anointing to do what I'm doing right now. Glory, this gospel of the kingdom, we always forget that's a sign too, but we never quote it. We never write that in our books. We never advertise that. This gospel shall be promoted, the promoting of the good as a witness. Glory and goodness go together. How do you know? Exodus 33, 18. Moses says to God, God, I long to see your glory. First thing God says to him, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. I'll give you another example. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. They're in the temple. Why do you need, hand me your book, We Decree. Why do we need to start speaking what God is saying? Decree is goodness. Decree is word. Because, watch what they were decreeing that manifested the glory. You know why? The Lord said to me, he said, the reason why my glory has been pushed back is not me. I said, well, then what is it? He said, it's what I told you when that angel showed up in August of 1999. I had an angel show up on my son's birthday, and the angel said, Y2K will not be as what they are saying. The spirit of fear is trying to cross the new millennial line ahead of the church. Man, I got so attacked, I had people calling me with hate mail, everything. I even took an airplane flight that night to go watch a football game. Nobody was on the plane but me. The stewardess was scared. But fear crossed the new millennial line ahead of the church. Why is this important? Listen to me. Fear is opposite of faith. Will the Son of Man find faith when he comes on the earth? Why? Because our people are so much in fear. So what we have to look at is this. We have to get back to the pronunciation, the decreeing of God's goodness. Here's why. 2 Chronicles 5.13. It says, as the singers were one, and the musicians were one, and they were decreeing, watch this, the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. The Lord is good over the United States of America. The Lord is good over President Trump. The Lord is good. His mercy endures forever over this land. And then if you keep reading 2 Chronicles 5.13, there's a word that people don't like. Then the house was filled with his glory. Go to 2 Chronicles 6. Verse 1, the next chapter, immediately following verse 13. 13 is the last verse of the chapter. It says, this glory, this glory appeared in a thick, dark cloud. We need to start promoting the good. We need to start prophesying the good. We need to quit promoting fear. It's hindering the glory of God and the move of the Spirit. And it's causing these nuts Oh, I can't say that. I'm talking about trees, okay? <laughs> it's causing it's causing a different voice to be the prominent voice. We need to promote the good and declare the good. Yeah. Lastly, are you ready? God divided light from darkness. This is very important because again it goes down to a matter of perspective. Let me give you an example. A matter of perspective. How many of you have ever read Matthew 7? In verses, uh, I think it's 22 through 24, Jesus said, a wise man built his house upon a rock. The winds come, the floods come, and the, and, and the rain. So it's floods, wind, and rain. People say, ah, see, you know what? You gotta be on the rock, you know, otherwise you get judged. And they promote it as uh, destruction. How many of you have ever heard it? I've never heard anybody preach it from the standpoint of perspective. Exodus 14, there was a cloud that appeared. It was the same cloud to Egypt, but to them it was darkness, but to the children of Israel it was light. So it's a matter of perspective. It's like what Jesus said to the man in Mark chapter 8 that we talked about. What do you see? God is asking that question of his people. What do you see when you see President Trump? You seeing the news as view, or do you see what I'm doing? What do you see in 2020? Do you see me raising up a president to make this nation greater again? 
You know, I had that prophecy for years that God would raise up this nation. Why did God choose, of all people, a president from New York City that was born there, the place where our towers were attacked, and he just happens to be born in New York City. The, the towers fell in New York City. Not only that, but he represents a tower, Trump Tower, World Trade Towers. He represented world trade. And, you know, people say, oh, yeah, but you know what, those towers, though, you know, and they get into all conspiracies. Let me just say this. You know why I know I'm biblical and accurate in what I'm saying to you? Because I've seen too many prophecies that have come from this mouth that have shocked me when it's come out, and I've watched them come to pass. But Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 22, God gives a warning to the prophet Isaiah, and it's a warning to those of you that you're calling yourself prophets. He gave a warning, and he said, as a prophet Isaiah, do not, well, let me just read it to you. Can I read it to you? I'm going to read it to you, Isaiah chapter 8. This is a warning to us, and this is why we don't understand that there's a dividing between light and darkness. Well, we can't see that there's a president being raised up out of New York City. It says this, it says, um, actually, I don't have the actual translation that I'm looking for, but here's what it says. God warns the people, he says to Isaiah, Isaiah, do not prophesy or say Everything is a conspiracy. There are so many conspiracy theory prophecies out there. And to be honest with you, it's getting wacky. And it's not from heaven. And God warned this great prophet Isaiah, said, stop, do not get caught up. You read it. Read it out of the NIV. Read it out of the English Standard Translation Version where you can see it more clearly in Isaiah 8. God literally says, do not prophesy conspiracies. And then he says this, he gives him a warning, and he says, and don't you dare prophesy what they, the people of the land, fear. Too many prophets are prophesying conspiracy and fear. And so God's dividing light from the darkness. Matthew 7, getting back to that as we close, what's your perspective? Do you know that Matthew 7, the wind, the fire, or the wind, the flood, and the rain are all elements of revival? The wind of the Holy Spirit, the flood of righteousness, Isaiah. Come on, Isaiah 6, uh, verse 3, that he shall come as the rain. How can we never see that side? How can we never see the Matthew 24, 14 side? How can we never see Acts chapter 2? We were all talking about blood moons, but yet we didn't continue to read. This, the, the moon will turn blood red. The, the, the sun will be darkened in those days before the great and awesome day of the Lord. Well, that says terrible. That word terrible means awesome. Do you think that there could be an awesome day before that day? Do you ever think that then it goes on and it talks about the great awakening and whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved? We see the words, oh, blood, fire, vapor of smoke. Well, what about the blood of, that's going to save a billion souls? What about the fire of Pentecost being another Pentecost come again? What about the vapor of smoke, the glory that appears in the midst of darkness? Because we don't realize that God is dividing. He is allowing this division on purpose to reveal the scummy darkness that has been in the seat of our nation. And he's allowing it on purpose. You say, oh, no, I don't believe that. Last example. God had to take some troublemakers called Korah in number 16 and create a division. He said, whoever is on the Lord's side, stand on this side. Whoever's standing on this side, stand on the other side. And the ground swallowed them up. What we don't understand is God's not afraid to divide. He's not afraid in this nation that has so much division to allow the evil to come up so that we have a righteous rebellion that comes on the land and people begin to say, we've had enough, we're tired of this, this is garbage, so that he can manifest his light and carry his agenda and it will also determine who's on the Lord's side. You have to ask yourself, are you on the Lord's side when you vote abortion? Are you on the Lord's side when you can't see that there is a mystery that has been raised up out of New York City that is God's mercy and goodness to repay back this land that was wounded in 9-11 and chose a man because there's a certain legal right of rulership that he had? 